Disclaimer. This story contains potential spoilers for the Dungeons & Dragons module Out of the Abyss by Green Ronin and Wizards of the Coast. If you're still playing or want to play this adventure in the future, don't watch this video. You have been warned. There are quite a few creatures in the Underdark. Many of them unfriendly, short-tempered or even deadly. In this story, our players will discover that some of them should not be trusted easily. After a few weeks of travel through the tangled caves of the Underdark and some interesting experiences and adventures, the players arrive at the city of Durigar, Grecklestow. Grecklestuck? Grecklestu? Grecklesto? Ah, uh, what the heck. Let's call it Grackle. The group is tired, hungry and most of them wish for something to drink and a good night's rest. But Junius, the wood of Paladin, has other plans. He looks at Seraph, the drow fighter, and sees his horrendous haircut. So the first thing he does after entering the city is to try and find a hairstylist. What you need to know, Seraph had a small dispute with, well, himself in the last village the group visited. He was possessed by demonic spores, which originated from the demon queen of fungi, Zugtmoy. Seraph and his former troop were marching through the Underdark when they encountered a group of infected myconids, the Mushroom Folk. In their panicked state, the mushrooms exhaled their spore clouds, effectively spreading the demonic spores and poisoning Seraph with it. Seraph went mad and killed one of his comrades. After taking a beating, he ended up in the prison of Valkenvelf, an outpost of House Miserim, waiting to be sent over to Mansa Baransan for his execution. He managed to escape with the help of Junius and some fellow prisoners, but the infection remained inside his body. Some time later, after the spores sprouted, his head exploded in a huge spore cloud burst. He became a Willis Drow spore servant of Zugmoy and began attacking his own group. After beating him down, Junius collected the pieces of his skull, crudely put them together and brought him back to life with a spell scroll that he acquired early in his adventure. Unfortunately, not only did his long-term memory suffer, but so did his long hair, and Junius is tired of putting up with his sight. After arriving at the city via boat, they are held by some invisible entities, which turn out to be Durigar. Durigar are dwarven people of the Underdark. Long time ago, they were simple shield dwarves that got into an argument with other shield dwarf clans. Some mind flayers did prove some experiments with them. It's a long story. Now they have, just like many, many other Underdark denizens, grey skin, glassy eyes, and a particularly quick temper. The group goes to the guest entrance to receive their first impression of the new city. Grekelstuck. Grekelstu. Is a dwarven city through and through. Great elegant walls surround the city and divided into districts, forges fueled by hot blazing fire, and gigantic buildings representing dwarven dwellings. It is a marvelous sight. Junius does not have an interest appreciating the structure of the city though. He's only interested in finding a hairstylist. The group arrives at the market, where merchants try to trump each other with their bargain cries. Next to the many market stalls and stores, which are present in great numbers here, Junius spots an eye-catching location. A weirdly colorful building decorated with lights, garlands and this thing that you can find at hair salons that spins and has these squiggly lines, you know? What's it called again? Um... A barber's pole, right! Junius grabs Seraph by his sleeve and pulls him over to the entrance, right into the store. The rest of the troop follows quickly. Hello! Wow, it's looking nice in here! They can see a noble establishment, lots of expensive mirrors and furnishings, metal surfaces and of course, dressing stools. A comforting smell lies in the air. Interestingly, there is a big cupboard filled with all kinds of flasks containing colorful liquids. I don't like the smell in here. Yeah, me neither. Let's get out of here, there's nobody in here anyway. Come on, don't you want to stop looking like a total dork? Yeah, it's amazing in here. Maybe I could get my hair fixed? Even Eldef, shield dwarf barbarian is battered after many fights. She lost both of her braids some time ago. It takes a moment, but after a short waiting period, a back door in the backmost part of the room opens up and a small figure juts its head out. The figure jumps out of the room, shuts the door and prances towards the group. They see a small Doriga with colorful wild hair, which sticks out into all kinds of directions from his head. He's wearing precious robes and some necklaces are hanging from his arms and around the neck, which is pretty abnormal for a Doriga if you ask me. Ah, welcome to Glamour Strong Little's Glamour Salon de Coiffeur. How can I help you, cute people? Ah, what a sight you are. Where have you been, my lovelies? Please. Let me serve you beautiful people, to make you even more beautiful. Immediately, Glamov jumps towards the group and just like a colorful Doriga he is, he dances around them, clicks his fingers and casts prestidigitation multiple times to drop the dirt and filth from the characters' bodies. Well, that's better. Ah, and I can see that we have some patients here that we should take care of, no? Right. My buddy Seraph here would really like his hair to grow back to a normal length. 
Do you think this would be possible somehow? Ah, uh, believe me. Everything is possible in the world of hair artistry. Come on now! Now Glamoth grabs Seraph by the arm and drags him over to the next seat. Seraph accepting it only reluctantly. <sighs> Glamoth walks over to the cupboard. Ah, this? Uh, well, no. Maybe this one. Ah, no, this one is perfect! He takes one of the tinctures out of the cupboard, runs back to Seraph and starts spreading the sticky fluid on his head. Seraph is in disgust. The smell of mint and grass fills the room and the characters witness how Seraph's hair rapidly grows to shoulder length, looking more firm and full than ever. Well, well, now you're looking scrumptious. Anything else, my darlings? Well, um, would it be possible... Of course, my dear. Again, he starts spreading the fragrant lotion, this time in Eldef's hair. Her braids immediately grow back. He cuts her hair a bit and voila, Eldef looks amazing. Eunius is simply exalted. <laughs> Glamour wow, spots Eldef, his enthusiasm. And only for a split second, his facial expression changes. He walks towards him. If that is all, I'd like my payment of 10 gold pieces, s'il vous plaît. Oh yeah, um, sure. Here. Very much appreciated, merci. Would you be so kind and accompany me to the back room? I have something very special for you there. Well, if that ain't creepy enough. Um, okay. Glamoth guides Junius to the back room, where he came from earlier. And Junius turns pale as he steps into the room. The first thing Junius hears is a clicking sound behind him. Glamoth locks the door. The first thing he sees is a half-dead Kuutoa, a fisherman from Slubaludop, another city in the Underdark. He looks at Junius, where their eyes meet, and the horror is written all over his face, at the wall is hanging another corpse but only half the body is left. The blood on the floor beneath is already dark brown, indicating a long time it has been hanging here. A thousand thoughts are going through Junius' mind, especially one thing, he has to get out of here. He can feel a hand on his shoulder. Well, well, you're a beautiful elf, and I think your blood will be of great purpose for me. <laughs> Shivers run down the spine of our paladin as Glamoth speaks. He turns around and can see that Glamoth is holding a dagger in his hands. He jumps out of the way immediately as Duriga tries to stab him. Junius runs away from the door. He hears moans of the Kuutoa in the background, but can't understand him, only hears incomprehensible bubbling out of his mouth. Junius can see the Duriga casting and flinging a fireball in his direction, but Junius can escape in the last second. He circles the Duriga and rushes towards the door. It is locked, but he doesn't care. He takes a sword, strikes out, and hits the door with two massive blows, one of them critical. The door breaks and it basically explodes into pieces, and he leaves the room behind. Let's get out of here! He shouts to his friends, and they leave the store next to no time, leaving the horror behind. Phew, lucky. To clarify some things that just happened and give you some backstory for Glamour's strong litter. Glamoth is a Durigar mage that is interested in the medical science and properties of blood. He got into contact with the healing properties of blood the first time he encountered a troll. He could see that the wounds of these type of creatures heal themselves. That event inspired him to start a business. A business that runs on capturing certain people that investigate his store and subsequently killing them to get their life essence to brew his pretty effective hair stores and other tonics. Oh well. This whole encounter is what my player got for begging me to find a hairdresser in the new city. I just put a little twist to the whole thing. I think it was pretty funny, okay? Guys, there are still more weird stories where this one came from. If you're interested in those and did like this video, please do us a favor and press the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content and future updates. By the way, we would love to read what kind of weird stories you encountered in your campaigns. Leave a comment and make our day. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a good one.